Find the moment at A, do the 120 Newton horizontal force. We're going to do this in two different ways. I'm going to do it using the scalar method, and I'm going to do it using a vector method so that you can see how those would look, and so that you can see that either way those are going to give you the same answer. First thing I'm going to do is break this 120 Newton load up into com components in the x and y, x, y, and z directions. This rectangle up here that is dotted in shows you that the 120 Newton load is going to be in a plane parallel to the xy plane. So there is no z component. Um, there are, however, of course, x and y components. This is a 60 degree angle, so this is going to be 60 on the square root of 3 newtons, and this is 60 newtons, cosine of 60 and sine of 60. This component tends to push the rod from A up the z-axis forward, and it twists the rod. This component along the rod tends to tip the a the, the rod along the z-axis over. So if you can think about how those would work, you've got one that's pushing it around the y-axis, so we're going to have a j component. We've got one that's pushing it around the z-axis, and you've got the one that's a little bit harder to see, you've got an I component as well. In each of these cases, we already know what the distances are. So the 60 Newton load, this is the one that goes along the rod, tends to tip this rod over with a distance of 0 0.08. Remember, it has to be the perpendicular distance, so it can't be the 160, which is in the same direction. This rotates in the negative I direction. The 60 on the square root of 3 components has a distance in both the x and uh, both along the y axis, which was the 0.16 meters, and along the z axis, which is the 0 0.08. The k is in the positive direction, but the j is in the negative direction. So once you've done that, you can write it all out. This is 4.80 i minus 8.31 j plus 16.6 k. That's the scalar method. And if you can visualize how each of these components twists that rod, you're all set. If you're having trouble imagining how this would tip it over, you're always welcome to use a vector method. Find r from the point you're taking the moment about at a. Remember, this is where we wanted to find the moment about. To the point of application of the force. In this case, r is 0 0.08 meters in the k direction plus 0 0.16 meters in the j direction. There is no offset in the x direction, but that would appear there if there had been. My f force, I've already broken up into components up there, is 60 newtons in the j minus 60 on the square root of 3 n in the i direction. When you find the moment by a cross product, you've got i, j, and k on top. Your r goes first. So it's 0, 0 0.16, 0 0.08. My k comes underneath. So I've got 0 in the k, and my force comes on the bottom, rather. This is 60 in the j, and minus 60 on the square root of 3 in the i direction. If you cross product, take that cross product, I'm just going to write this out so that you can sort of see how to do a cross product again. Again, if you need more review on how to do a cross product, make sure you look that up. 0 times 0 minus my square root of 60 on the square root of 3, 0 0.08. Again here, in this j direct component, I've got three negative signs. So I'm going to end up with a negative j component. That gives me, if you multiply that out, minus 4.80i minus 8.31, oh, 1, 3, excuse me, I've written it down, j plus 16.6k. That's the answer, whether you use a vector method or a scalar method. Don't forget your units. This is in Newton meters.